Stand by, VT5. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Roll, VT5. I could see the enormous scope from the very first day. I knew that it was going to be a world beater and uh, that it would be uh, vulgarized. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We have been able to have this affair with Princess David, Princess Diane, here on her first trip to the United States. Mr. Wilson added, we would all have had our backs to the wall by now, but we're so behind with the building program that the wall isn't ready. <laughs> and for the ladies, tonight we talk about rum barbers and what to wear if we got them. <laughs> See how Oxo adds richness, colour, flavour. After a night of constant artillery exchanges, with the fires in Stanley still burning, and in 12 degrees of frost, British troops patrolled back to us. The world unjustly... Focuses its attention upon the burial of an IRA convicted terrorist. At Anderson's Town, three IRA riflemen stepped forward. November the 2nd, 1936, Alexandra Palace, London. Adele Dixon performing Magic Rays of Light at the opening of BBC Television. At the toss of a coin, it was agreed that the first program should be performed on the Baird mechanical system, and then restaged for the Marconi EMI electronic method an hour later. What should have been the pinnacle of John Logie Baird's achievement actually marked the beginning of his demise. His system was considered cumbersome, contrived and fallible. It was perhaps only out of a sense of fair play for the British that the BBC persisted with it for four months before opting for the Russian-designed electronic system. But Baird's contribution is summed up by the pioneering BBC engineer Tony Bridgewater. It was a way of doing television, but it wasn't the best way, you see. He did it the only way he could, really, I suppose, starting as he did in 1923 with um, just his bare hands and, and a few shillings. Um, he probably did urge along uh, the progress of television, if it, if it was only to get competitors on, on the go. The Royal Charter that established the BBC demands programmes that educate, inform and entertain. In 1936, attempts to fulfil the first two categories sometimes proved less than dynamic. The first week's highlights included a display by champion Alsatians from the Metropolitan and Essex Canine Society's show. And if that wasn't excitement enough, there was the Golden Hind, a model of Drake's ship made by a bus driver who described its construction. But the BBC found a more staple diet by literally living off the fat of the land and bringing the magic of music hall into the home, as producer Cecil Madden explains. You've got to remember what London was like from 36 to 39. Everybody was spending a pot of money. You see, there were all the people who thought, there won't be a war, we'll muddle through somehow, let's spend our money and have a good time. And there were the people who said, there's going to be a war in any case, so let's spend our money. Everybody was spending money. The place was really running with cash. And every place in London that could had a show. So there was, there was heaps and heaps of talent available. I mean, if anyone said what were the programmes mostly, you could say that there was wonderful variety. And, and of course, another thing was, this was the great period of the dance bands. I mean, there was Henry Hall on the BBC, there was uh, Harry Roy, there was uh, Jack Payne, there was Jack Hilton, 
all these bands were available. It was a select group of enthusiasts such as Cecil Madden who truly understood television. Amongst the general public, misconceptions ran high. Dennis Norden. Frank Muir had an aunt who believed that when you switched off the television set, the actors went home. <laughs> and there, were, there were people who wouldn't have it in the house because it attracted flies. And if people didn't have a set in the house, then there was no audience. The producer of the first programme, Dallas Bauer. I think the reckoning was that uh, after the first six months, we had an audience of about the size of the capacity of Covent Garden or Drury Lane. That was in 36. And in 39, when we shut down, when, when war was declared, we reckoned our audience was about 12,000. Ambition knew no bounds. In the space of just three years, the television pioneers staged no fewer than 362 plays and 36 operas. But on a week-to-week -week basis, there was the topical magazine programme Picture Page. The presenter was Joan Miller, a Canadian actress, and she had ample opportunity to employ her stage skills in coping with the unplanned. There was always this problem of a camera breaking down. And you'd hear from the box, well, the camera two's broken down, Joan, so we'd just go straight on talking, will you, until we've got that fixed. And so the camera would come to me, and I got into the habit of just talking to the audience about really anything that came into my head. You may say some things never change. And that seems to be very true with regard to the old showbiz adage about working with children and animals. Especially animals as Cecil Madden learned when Madame Coringa, the incredible rubber woman, left her performing crocodiles at the Alley Pally. On Sunday there was a play going on in the studios with all these animals in, in underneath. And um, after Sunday night, the main big crocodile got rather bored and managed to, to get out. And he went past the, the uh, make-up rooms, past the canteen, and he came right out turned right into the front hall of the building and, and rested there. Can you imagine the cleaners arriving next day to let themselves in with their own key? Rumour has it they've never been seen since. This is the national programme from London. The first news, copyright reserved. And these are today's main events. Germany has invaded Poland and has bombed many towns. With war General approaching, the aerial at Alexandra Palace was now potentially an ideal Parliament beacon for German bombers. And the government wasted no time in closing down the service. Cecil Madden. On September the 1st, 1939, a message came through from Broadcasting House. Turn off all the lights. Don't bother about a closing announcement. Close it down. Turn off the, the current. And we were in the middle of a Walt Disney film called uh, Mickey's Gala Premier. We were about halfway through it when the control room did exactly what that. They turned the lights out and they turned the current off. And there, there were people, you know, left with no goodbye. It was just a dead close, which was awful. I say, I've seen you now. Normal service resumes in seven years. We bring you live pictures in just a moment.